Hi guys, Sanjita Miska from LBC took a call from a very angry lady who doesn't like what she sees as foreigners or perhaps people from another ethnic background pointing out the problems Britain is facing. Anna was extremely rude and eventually hung up. Why? Because Sanjita was talking about how it's the responsibility of government to look after its citizens, to provide a social safety net to protect the most vulnerable, be it economically or physically or mentally. Anna was having none of it. Have a listen. Anna, in witness. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Yeah, I'm not going to agree with you. <laughs> go on, go for it. I'll say, so I just want to explain to you my situation. Yeah, I come please. from a family of 10 kids. Mm. And my mother worked 12 hour nights at the power station in the canteen. Yeah. My dad died when we were younger. I'm sorry. I never had free school meals. Um, I firmly believe that it's not the government's job to feed kids. I believe it's down to the parents. Now, there's a thing called the social safety net, but part of the social safety net is the social contract. Now, the social contract being we as citizens must follow the rules. We must not break the laws of the, of the state. We must uh, not rebel. We must keep our noses clean. And if we do that, we have protection from the, by the state. So the state will make sure that it will deal with crimes, that if we report a crime, it will be dealt with. It doesn't always work, but this is the idea behind it. The social safety net, of course, as well, if we have a problem, an economic problem, we lose our job, that there is a net for us to fall into, that we will be protected economically. And we have this as part of a civil society. We understand, you know, in the past we didn't believe this, but now we do. We believe that it's important that everyone is given the basics to survive. It's also in our own interest. It's in the interest of the rich as well. They don't want people banging on their door with uh, pitchforks and, uh, and, and lit candles or whatever, <laughs> flaming torches. They don't want people, you know, upsetting the apple cart. So it's in, it's in everyone's interest that we have a society where children are fed, where if you get sick, you can go to the hospital for free or as close as possible to that. And if you lose your job or you're unable to work, that there is some sort of support. I don't believe all this, what you're saying, let's all sit together and have a meal and all that kind of stuff. I don't believe any of that. And the reason why I'm saying that is because you're on UK radio. Mm -hmm. How are the kids doing in Africa? Do they get free school meals? Well, for some children, it depends where you are in Africa, actually. I was born in Africa, so I can tell you a little bit about it. I know you it. were, yeah. I know you. Exactly, <laughs> I mean, you were. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think well, it depends where you, you are in Africa. The likes um, of you and Marcus Rashford. The likes of you and Marcus Rashford. The likes of you. Just let that word marinate in your mind for a moment. Now, she's, of course, attacking uh, Sanjita here because Sanjita is from... Uh, from Africa, from East Africa. I don't know which state, but that's irrelevant. But uh, she also is attacking Marcus Rashford. Now, Marcus Rashford was born in Manchester. I think his, his grandparents were from the West Indies, but he was born in Manchester. He's as British as Anna is. But Anna has a problem with Marcus Rashford as well. I wonder why. What, what is it about... Sanjita and Marcus Rashford that she has a problem with. Come on, UK TV telling, and radio telling mm. us all what the government should do. And your own country don't provide any, not even a national health service. So do us a favour and shut up. OK, hang on, Anna. Listen, if you want to have a conversation, that's totally fine. But please don't be rude to me. Oh, can we not get her back? I think she's, oh, she's hung up. That's a real shame, actually. Yes, they normally do. <laughs> the racists normally do just give you some, some sort of in insult and abuse and then hang up. They don't really like to hang around to have their positions challenged because the, the position will fall apart like a cheap suit. Um, this person is a racist. They don't want, and they especially don't want foreigners or people from another ethnic background pointing out the problems. 
the, the Daily Mail, the Express, the Sun have poisoned these people's minds so much that they are that they can't accept someone different to them saying well, maybe things are not working out very well here or you know maybe we could make things better they, they would actually prefer to live in a situation where the Tories are just funneling money to their donors and to billionaires they prefer that than to have I don't know a society where everyone is treated with respect but you know Treating people with respect requires you to also treat people with respect. Actually, because I would have liked to talk to you, Anna, in a bit more depth. I would say a couple of things. This is my country. Um, yes, I was born abroad. Uh, yes, I'm of Indian heritage. But uh, I grew up here and I have been educated here uh, in state schools. I am very passionate about the future of this country. I have always paid my taxes um, because I've always been paid PAYE. And I think it's absolutely right for me to use my platform here on national radio to advocate for things that I think are for the social good. And 100% in agreement. She's using her platform to argue for things that are in the social good. So she's arguing on behalf of Anna. Sanjita is in a better position economically than Anna is, probably. But she's still saying it's necessary for me to to argue in, in Anna's, uh, on behalf of Anna. Because I, I want to live in a society that treats everyone with respect. That if it sees a family going hungry, children going hungry, the government actually step in and do something about it. And, you know, clearly, Anna, you do listen to me because you've heard me refer to the fact that I was born in East Africa. Um, and we came here, um, I have to say, it wasn't something that my parents chose to do. They felt forced to do that. And we're very grateful that we came here. But equally, I would say I have made a contribution to this country, as have uh, my brother and sister, and actually, ev frankly, every immigrant in my family, certainly in my immediate circle, family and friends. And I would say to suggest that I am not allowed to have an opinion on um, issues of deprivation or issues of levelling up um, society or advocate for people that perhaps aren't as well off as I am, and I'm very grateful to have a job. Um, I think is wrong and I think it's short-sighted and um, I'm sorry you rang off Anna because I would have actually like to have quite a conversation with you about it and I do absolutely passionately believe that that experience I had growing up, going to state primary school, seeing my friends separated off into a separate school queue to have a free school meal when my parents who did not have very much money, I've talked about this before, um, but were able to provide sandwiches for me to take to school not separating us, not, that, that, that experience of seeing us separated as children has been so impactful for me. Um, I don't want other kids going through that. I think it is divisive. And I tell you what, it has absolutely put a fire in my belly to make sure that I do use this platform to advocate um, for um, a level playing field for all kids and actually for society to be a meritocracy. Wonderful. This is so important to hear because She's not like someone like Jacob Rees-Mogg, who will pretend, yes, I care about the working class, I care about people struggling, or Boris Johnson either, because these are individuals who have never understood, never been actually within the vicinity growing up with people who are struggling. So they have no understanding of it. They never have to concern themselves about, will I be able to pay the bills? Maybe Boris Johnson, because he has so many damn children, he doesn't know where they are and he has to pay their upkeep. Uh, and that's why he was complaining about the buttons or the pittance he was earning as prime minister. He can always leave and go back to writing articles for the Telegraph. But it's important that someone like Sanjita is using her platform, saying how, how things really are. And even though she wasn't struggling like those children, she did understand what they were going through. Wonderful uh, monologue here. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what do you think? As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.